Well, my name is Joe Young. Uh, I'm originally from Hartford, but I grew up in Bloomfield most of my life. And I'm a creator. I do many things. Uh, I'm a cartoonist. I'm a film producer. I'm a youth advocate, and I also run a nonprofit. And I run a profit called Young's Studios. I get my inspiration from everywhere. It might be me observing people on the street. It might be a news story. It might be a song. It might be me making a mistake. It might mean it might be one of my kids doing something really good. So the inspiration comes from different places. When it comes to comic art, I have a very, even though I could do a more stylized, I like to keep it loose and kind of rough uh, because when I do comic strips and I do comic, I enjoy the writing. Even though I like the drawing process, I enjoy the writing and the message. Within this exhibit, you can see a lot of the work is message orientated. And I think if I keep it simple and I keep it rough, it shows that the message is the most important for me. Oh, I relate to a lot of artists. When it comes to comic uh, art, of course, my uh, inspiration as a child was Charles Schultz. You might see a little Schultz in my work. Uh, as far as the, the, the craft and the, uh, the professionalism and the craftsmanship, uh, one of my inspirations, I've never seen a comic strip artist as great as a man by the name of Bill Watterson. He does a comic strip called Calvin and Hobbes. Years ago, there was uh, uh, Mr. Kelly who did Pogo while Kelly but him, I also like these new guys like Aaron Magruder, who does Boondocks. So I, I have a lot of favorites when it comes to that. I've always doodled, but I've always written. Ever since I've been seven years old, I, was, I wrote my first play at seven. And then I really didn't discover I could draw until I got in college. And so when I found that I could draw and I had that ability, I mixed it with the writing and came out with a comic strip. But I've always done plays. And if you look, a comic strip is no more than a play on paper. It has character, it has, uh, it has moods. And so um, I think one of my favorite pieces, uh, well, there's a couple and we'll talk about a little bit later. But I have a one panel cartoon that says major success. And it, 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 there's a sign where a girl says to Dr. Joe, can I put it on credit? And there's a sign that has pain, sacrifice, tenacity, supporters, timing. People are looking for the simple answer on success, but it's a combination of a lot of different things and people want to put it on credit. So that might be one of my favorite, but my other favorite probably would be one of the first ones I did years ago that had an apartheid theme. Uh, and, um, you, you know, I'm, I'm big into social commentaries, and I did this real simple strip, but it really took off, and uh, Archbishop Tutu people heard about it and commissioned it to raise money for South African refugees, and it won first place in a contest, and it was, it was amazing because it was probably the most simple cartoon I've ever done, but it got the most traction and helped more people. The best thing about being an artist is being able to express yourself through an art form. Instead of getting mad or going overboard, you're able to express it through your work. And, and I love the creative process, taking an idea and having a vehicle to showcase it. You think different. You don't think like most people. We're probably outcasts. We're probably called weird. We're not weird, we're just not you. Uh, but your, your thinking is a little bit different sometimes, and not everybody understands the way, the way you think. I felt I'd given up when I first started, but I had an angel. Um, my mother passed in 1988 when I was about to give up. She said, Joe, if you believe in it, and if it's right, continue to do it. It may not come right now, but anything worth having doesn't come easy. And it was before I was trying, I was young though, man, when I started. So I'm 21, man, I see the comics and newspapers, I couldn't get a break, but my mother was there with inspiration. And then I got a call from Gail King, who's on CBS Morning, and she said, Joe, I've seen your work, 
why don't you come on my TV show? And the rest is history. So I felt like giving up. And then when you do big projects, you know, not the comic art, but like movie projects, that stuff is very difficult. And you think about giving up, but you don't. You just keep going. I think true success is not in never falling, but as they say, rising after you have fallen, getting knocked down and keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. But if you're passionate about it, the power comes from above and the love gets through any barrier. Yes, there, there is a purpose. If you notice all my work, I try to do stuff that's thought provoking, not preachy, but, and that's why the name of the comic strip is Scruples for most of the work here because it's a part of your mind that makes you want to think. And I just want people to think and examine. We're living in a world of people judging and people, and we're all guilty of it. And um, with my work, I just want to make people think and hesitate to think before they make judgment or make a decision on something. It, 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 you know, it, it, it's amazing uh, that whole process because sometimes you have an intent and people see it different. But I think it's kind of cool because you're creating this piece and people have different perspectives of it. And then you try to think, you know, that, wow, I wasn't even thinking about that. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's, it's bad. But the bottom line is, as an artist, you, you do things from the heart. So it really doesn't matter what anybody says as long as is organic to who you are and you're expressing what you want no matter what people say. Just keep it from your heart. Now there's different things, are we talking an artist who's trying to do as a profession or someone who's trying to do as a hobby? If you're trying to do as a hobby, just do what you want to do, man. If you're doing it as a profession, you want to become a professional artist, when there's an exchange of money, that means you're kind of work for hire with someone. And if you want to make it, don't get too caught up in your thing. Of course, bring your own flavor to it. But remember, you're getting paid. So just give the client what they want and you'll be eating for a long time. Uh, but, but there's a certain balance. But no matter what, just be true to your craft. But depending if you're talking commercial art or doing a hobby. You know, I think it's easier as an artist when you, you're not doing it as a profession and you're able to do what you want. Well, why not eat off your art? So probably do both. I think at the end of the day, we all strive for happiness. We look at movies and you have the superheroes and you have different people, the villain. Everybody's looking for happiness at the end of the day. It's not about the material things. It's really, at the end of the day, I think true happiness is what the great leaders of all knew, which is it's about service. And service is the greatest reward one can offer one, which ultimately creates happiness for you. And what the artist is able to do is create a vehicle of inspiration for someone to find themselves or look at themselves uh, through heart art. But I think if you want to get along in this world, this is just, again, I know what not to do. I don't always know what to do. But I think the key to life from my experience, been on this planet for 50 years, is having a positive attitude and putting out positive energy because that attracts positivity. So if I have to give advice or words of encouragement and even medicine for myself, even when I'm going through it. Remain positive no matter what. There was a great song re written recently, and I think it's a key, I think it's a blueprint to life and art. It was written by Pharrell and it's called Happy. Well, I'm standing in front of probably my most recognized project of all times, and I created a comic strip the length of a football field by six feet high. Uh, the year was probably, I think, in 1997. And I do a lot of youth nonprofit work, and I wanted to do a project that would tie as many kids as I, I could. And I said, what about a comic strip? 
So I talked to C. Hartford, I talked to Ray Allen, who was with the Milwaukee Bucks at the time, and Gail King, and I said, I want to do a big project. The city of Hartford donated a big easel, which was a fence, and we had kids come throughout New England to paint on this comic strip that had a literacy theme. When I did it, I just wanted to do a big project, and like I had mentioned before, when you do positive stuff, and the greater the positivity, the greater the reward. But I do stuff not for money or for recognition, it's really to help people, you know? And so when I did this comic strip, we had over 2,000 kids paint on it. Uh, then uh, the, uh, the uh, Guinness World Record people heard about it and it became a Guinness World Record. It went into Ripley's, believe it or not. And then in Washington, D.C., they heard about all this work I was doing, volunteering, bringing the arts to disadvantaged kids. And so I, and I received the Daily Point of Light Award from the White House. I mean, it wasn't just the comic strip. It was a, com it was a combination of things, but it was this comic strip that got the buzz that people all over the, the country heard about the project. This was a really cool project. It was called Big Time Saver. It was a collaboration between me, my, uh, the Hartford Animation Film Institute, uh, Denise, the state of Connecticut's treasurer, Denise Napier's office, Bank of America, uh, 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 the junior achievement. Uh, and what this was, was trying to inspire fifth graders to save and do better with their money. And it was called Big Time Saver. So we did these animated shorts on uh, borrowing money, saving money and college savings. So it was kind of like, I'm gonna show my age, but it was kind of like Schoolhouse Rock, where they had the music and, and we did it with financial literacy to teach kids to save. And it was also a, a newspaper uh, article in the Hartford Current, which took up half a page in full color. And again, you do something positive, good stuff happened, and it won the National Education and Newspaper Award. This is exciting because uh, this piece here is my graphic novel, and that's one of the reasons the Harvard Public Library uh, invited me to showcase the work here. Uh, they're doing this big initiative, uh, introducing kids to graphic novels, and I did one called Scruples, The Legend Begins. Next! What up, Gwen? Dr. Joe. My little sister keeps taking my sweater. She doesn't ask if she can wear it, and it makes me mad. Is it your favorite sweater? No, it barely fits me. And why do you think she takes it? I don't know. I guess she likes it. And when do you realize she's taking it? When I see her wearing it. So you don't really miss it until you see her with it. And you've outgrown it? Yeah, I think I see what you're getting at. I don't really need it. So maybe I could give it to my sister since she likes it so much. A wise person once said that it is better to give than it is to receive. Maybe you could give the sweater to her as a Christmas present. I get you, Dr. Joe. Thanks. Another home run. My boy, Dr. Joe. Uh, Scruples Legend Begins is a graphic novel that features my Scruples characters. One of the things about Joe Young's work, whether it's a feature film or a comic book piece or comic art, it all takes place in Hartford, Connecticut. So the backdrop for Scruples of Legend Begin is in Hartford, Connecticut. So you can see Main Street, Barber Street, the state capital with these kids who live in a group home. And they're dealing with adult issues because they're, they're in a group home, they don't have parents. And so that's what the basis of. There's two stories in the graphic novel. The first one is a holiday story. And the second one is on entrepreneurship where Dr. Joe and Bubblegum start a, a water stand and they have to go through hiring and firing. But it's a lot of fun and hopefully people can see themselves through the strip. Within the exhibit, we have several pieces from the book. Uh, we have mirths in there and mirth means humor. So then there's some standalone uh, comic strips too, just to make you laugh. And we turn the first story into an animated piece that showed on the Black Family Channel and Fox Affiliates and animation. So not only do you have the hard copy, but you also have animated uh, pieces as well. And that's what Scruples of Legend Begins is all about.
Thank you.